In anterior shoulder instability, the subscapular tendon plays an important function both structurally and biomechanically. Simeonides in 1974 first demonstrated that recurrent anterior dislocations cause a tendon elongation that can reach a length of one and a half centimeters longer than the one on the contralateral side. A simple capsular repair is often not strong enough to prevent a recurrent dislocation because it doesn't correct this elongation. In 1986, Lenny Johnson proposed an arthroscopic technique to address chronic recurrent shoulder dislocations with virtually non-existent glenohumeral ligaments that involve the articular portion of the subscap tendon. Although there are numerous advantages of an arthroscopic approach, Johnson's technique was criticized because of potential complications related to the placement of the metal staple for tendon fixation adjacent to the level of the shoulder joint. According to the technique proposed by Lenny Johnson, we've conceived an assembly kit consisting of a tape commonly used for cuff repair and a 3.5 millimeter knotless peak anchor to perform the capsulolabral complex augmentation. The suture anchor bone hole is placed on the anterior glenoid edge at three o'clock. From the lower cannula, the middle articular portion of the subscap tendon and, if present, the glenoid labrum are perforated with a penetrator punch. Then one of the free ends is pulled out from the upper cannula with a suture retriever. In the next step, the same suture tape end is passed again through the lower cannula so that the two ends are astride the perforated tissues and come out again from the same lower cannula. The free ends of the tape are passed through the anchor eyelet. The push lock is pushed along the tape towards the bone hole. While inserting it into the bone, the tape sutures are kept in traction. We can clearly see the lesion repair and the complete closure of the anterior pouch. Furthermore, subscap tendon advancement and fixation reduces its slipping upwards during arm elevation thus acting as an anterior stabilizer of the humeral head in preventing recurrence. The tape is assembled in the penetrator eyelet and passed through the inferior cannula. The middle part of the intraarticular portion of the subscap is penetrated. The free ends of the tape are pulled out from the same lower cannula. The free ends of the tape are passed through the anchor eyelet. The anchor is then pushed along the tape and care is taken to maintain the two ends parallel. The anchor is pushed into the joint towards the bone hole. At this point, it's important to control the tendon tensioning, holding the tape ends in traction. The anchor insertion. This step has to be done with the arm in neutral rotation. We can clearly see the complete closure of the anterior pouch. 